and the broadcast is now starting all attendees are in listen only mode good afternoon and welcome to the drums webinar let's talk about christmas campaign planning in association with adroll my name is justin pierce from the drum well, last week was the hottest week of the year, so we thought this is the ideal time to start talking about Christmas, my favourite time of year. I've got two amazing guest speakers today. Let me introduce them. First of all, Sarah Hajar, Sarah Hajar, sorry, I keep saying that, from Adroll. Uh, Adroll is a leading performance marketing platform with over 25,000 clients worldwide. It's got offices in London, San Francisco, New York, Dublin, Sydney and Tokyo. And it deals with over 25,000 customers in over 150 countries. Its suite of high performance tools works across devices, helping businesses attract, convert and grow their customer base. The company is home to the world's largest opt-in advertiser data co-op, the Intent Map, with over 1.2 billion deterministic user profiles. The company's goal is to build the most powerful marketing platform through performance, usability and openness. And Sarah's worked at Adderall for four years now as a senior account manager, working with big brands like Adidas, Dr. Martens, and Boohoo.com. She works with all of Adderall's UK strategic accounts, including well-known retail giant Moonpig. And Sarah's collaborated with, com with companies across industries to help them reach their goals and drive performance, lucky for us today, especially around Christmas. So joining us, our second guest speaker is the fantastic Moonpig. Uh, Moonpig is, I'm sure as everyone knows, a UK-based business which sells personalised greeting cards, gifts, flowers and merchandise, as well as other gifts for every occasion. The site launched in July 2000 and celebrated its 15th birthday just last year. The company prides itself on offering high-quality, personal, fast and reliable services to customers. One of its USPs for customers is that they are able to order cards up to 7pm to be sent in the post the same day. Moopig plan meticulously to ensure that Christmas is one of the most profitable seasons across all product categories. So joining us today, we're very pleased to announce, is their digital marketing manager, Nick Marshall. And his key focus, focus is working closely with multiple vendors to ensure great performance across all digital campaigns for the brand. As I say, two great speakers. We'll spend the next 40 minutes or so uh, going through some great insight tips and tricks to get ready for your campaign Christmas planning. We've got Q&A at the end. Uh, if you look on your screen to the right-hand side facing you, there's a little questions uh, box. Edge your question there. I'll be monitoring them all the way through the webinar and pick out some of the most interesting ones to put to our speakers at the end of the webinar. So now, without further ado, thank you again for joining us. And I'd like to hand over to Sarah. Great. Um, thank you for the introduction, Justin, and um, hi, everybody. I'm Sarah. Thank you also for joining today. Um, myself, along with Moonpig and The Drum, as Justin said, are here today to really set you up for Christmas campaign success. Um, I know it seems early. It's only July, but now is the time to start planning. Just a quick recap, as Justin mentioned, at AdRoll, we have over 25,000 customers worldwide, and we do work across multiple industries. Fun fact, we do crunch 20 times more data than the New York Stock Exchange daily. Uh, why does this matter? It's because of this data that we are able to analyze and recommend best strategies for our customers, not only across the UK, but also worldwide. Um, so just as you can see on the agenda here, what will we look at today? We're going to take a look at Christmas spend trends in the UK. That's harder to say than you think. Um, so just kind of get a feel for where are consumers and customers buying, are they buying, are they spending more at Christmas, et cetera. Um, we're going to speak with Nick from Moonpig to learn more about how he plans for a successful Christmas every time. And then we're going to share 10 tips for successful Christmas ads. Um, as Justin mentioned, get your questions ready. We will have a Q&A session to close out the webinar, um, and just again, on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see a box where you can go ahead and um, enter any questions you have throughout our time. Okay. So looking at Christmas spend trends, um, you can see here on this graph that we have found one very interesting and maybe not shocking trend that we see a huge spike for retailers' um, total say, annual sales in the month of December. In fact, the reason why Christmas is so important for so many retailers is because 20% of their annual sales happen specifically during the Christmas season. Um, in fact, there's about a 30% increase in total sales for the UK market 
in the month of December um, when you look at compared to any other month throughout the year. So this just really means that this is a time for you to capitalize on getting in front of your audience, making sure your brand is top of mind so that they're coming and making their Christmas purchases through you. Um, next slide, yeah, thanks. Um, now when we're looking at the online space specifically, this here will show you that we're seeing continual growth in online total retail sales year over year. There's an upward trend of about 2% growth every year looking at 2011 through 2015. This may seem small, but when you're talking about billions of pounds of total retail dollars spent, this is actually a really significant number. Um, in fact, for Christmas, of 2017, we expect online sales alone to be responsible for over 70 billion pounds, again, just in the UK. So this just reinforces the importance of capitalizing on the key season to drive success for your business and again, to make sure you're continually top of mind for your own customer base. We also, so yeah, we also took a look at mobile specific. Um, we wanted to say, okay, outside of just online, are we seeing continual increasing trends in the mobile space? Um, here you can see that in fact we are. We have seen in general um, continual growth and by 2017, we expect total mobile purchases to account for about 37% of annual retail sales online. Again, this is just in general outside of the Christmas season, but that's nearly 40% of all online sales coming from mobile. So this just proves this is a space that's growing and a space that you need to capitalize and be a part of. Um, we do expect Q4 of this year and continual years moving forward to have an even higher mobile total retail sales um, in 2015, so just last year, for the Christmas season, over half of online sales in the UK were completed on mobile devices. So again, this just shows that the social platforms, the mobile pl platforms, the app space, this is a place where you need to be, you want to be advertising, and again, you want to be in front of your client base because this is where they are making a lot of purchases. Um, so this we want to take a look at, so are they only using their mobile devices for purchasing or what other kinds of things are they doing? So here you can kind of take a look at this graph and see that consumers are actually not only using their phones to make purchases, but they're, it's a, playing a key part of their in-store buying behavior. So over 50% of consumers use their mobiles in store. So while they're in store looking to make a purchase, they actually use it to look up to make sure they're getting the best deal, compare prices with other potential competitors, or um, just over 40% use it to find more product details, make sure they're getting the best you know, product out there um, versus maybe a potential competitor. So this is really important for any of you out there who think you have more um, foot traffic in store, you see more purchases through your brick and mortar store, and you don't think it's important to maybe have that online um, presence or that mobile presence. This just proves that it is important because even when they're in store, they're on that mobile device, they're looking up information, and you don't want to miss the opportunity to be giving them the best price or the product details they're looking up. Um, so that just kind of wraps up the overall, you know, what's going on in the market. So quick recap, people are spending a lot in December. Um, it's a huge season. Christmas, we see sales skyrocketing across the retail space, both online and mobile. So you want to make sure, again, you're present in both of those platforms. Um, now we just want to take a minute to talk with Nick. Um, again, he's the digital marketing manager from Moonpig. And he, needless to say, is an expert in this space. As you all know, Moonpig is a highly kind of seasonal um, product with people at different holidays throughout the year. And as mentioned before, specifically really focus on making Christmas one of their top, most profitable seasons. Um, so thanks for joining us, Nick. No problem. Thanks for that great introduction. Happy to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so Nick, I guess to start off, if you wouldn't mind letting us know, obviously Moonpig, it's a huge seasonal business with lots going on, a lot of moving pieces. And I would just love to know, how do you keep on top of things and when exactly do you start planning for Christmas? Well, I think preparation really is key. Um, make sure you have your KPIs absolutely nailed before you start anything. Um, outline, outline what you want to achieve and um, get your creative dads done as soon as you can. 
Um, remember, a lot of Christmas ads go live early to mid-November, so you need to make sure that you have your creative team um, absolutely on top um, of your ad creation so that they're delivered on time and in line with the specs um, of the spenders that you're using. Um, having different creatives to test is, um, is really key too. Um, make sure that you don't uh, have all your eggs in one basket. Remember, customers like variation, and if you want to avoid ad fatigue, that's really, really key. Um, we circulate a detailed ad schedule with flight times before every campaign um, to make to keep on top of what we have coming up and what we want to go live and when. Then, when we uh, weekly, then we have a weekly call um, and daily reporting, so we can monitor what works well and what we need to what we need tweaking it on every campaign. In terms of what what we do um, and when we when we want to start Christmas planning, we're well on the way. Five months is um, is a bit early, um, but it, you know it's never it's never too far in advance to start. Um, and obviously, don't worry if you haven't started um, yet. Yeah, there's still time, um, but you should probably pretty much get on that this week. <laughs> uh, wonderful, thank you, Nick. Um, and I would just love if you would take some time to talk us through, you know, what did you do last Christmas and what types of results did you see from Moonpig? Well, our main focus was on driving the highest efficiencies um, that we see that we had seen throughout the entire year during the Christmas period. We used AdRoll's Dynamic Ads to tailor creative to each individual customer journey, which was an ex excellent tool during peak. As uh, stock can vary so much in retail, we would work with AdRoll to produce uh, Dynamic Ads, which reflected our product supply. Um, so when products were getting snapped up, or when we wanted to promote specific lines uh, across web and social, we had that flexibility. Uh, wonderful. In terms of results, uh, we had one of our most successful Christmas peaks ever. Uh, we found that on average our Facebook campaigns drove an ROI of about 10 times that of web. Uh, Dynamic Ads had a click-through rate that was uh, about two times higher than that of our HTML5 ads. Uh, this all in all helped us achieve our goal of, of driving strong ROI for Christmas last year. Wonderful, great, thanks for sharing that. Um, and just kind of thinking of this year, do you have any like tips and tricks that you recommend for success? Well, we got a wealth of data from previous years, um, which inform what we will do this year. Uh, a tip would be to gather your data, know your data, also be critical of yourself and what you did last year, so we can keep up with competition and weave the learnings in your future plans. Um, another tip I would give, um, Christmas for us is not the time to take risks with new platforms. Trial vendors and any new tech early on so that you don't encounter any teething issues over such a critical uh, trading period. Um, another tip I would give um, to anyone new to this um, and something we're looking at at the moment is to diversify all inventory sources. Um, with social, social media consumption so high these days, uh, make sure that you're not just running campaigns only on web but across Facebook and Instagram. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of brands still aren't doing this. Um, so know your audience and mirror their behavior. We know a large percentage of our audiences uh, convert off Facebook, for example. Uh, it's important to know your audience online habits so you can serve ads in the right place at the right time. This is particularly important um, in the run-up to Christmas, especially as mobile and online purchases uh, continue to grow, obviously, during this period. Another one would be um, remain competitive. Even if you can't match your competitors, um, it's really, really important that customers feel that they're getting added value. Christmas is an absolute dogfight. Customers are becoming more and more price savvy. So even if you already have this offer on your site or on other, other marketing channels, a voucher code, a coupon, free delivery, money off, these can be the things that really catch the eye and keep you front of mind during that absolutely critical period for your business. Um, my final tip is, re is remembering to expand the reach of your audience. Make use of the money you've already spent. Reach out to people who made purchases last Christmas and remind them to come back this year. Segment them by product if you can. Look at their purchase recency to see if you need to target them at all. They might come back anyway. Be forensic, absolutely forensic, with your segmentation and it will minimize wastage and maximize performance. Um, great, thank you so much. And also just a quick, you know, if anyone has questions, you know, don't be shy. Again, the box should be on the right-hand side of your screen. So just pop your questions in, ask away, because we want to have a good Q&A session at the end of this. Um, Nick, thanks again for your tips. 
Um, kind of on that final one, just about expanding your reach, I think that this is really critical myself at the Christmas season and something I do recommend to all of my clients. Um, this is when you can use something like CRM data, um, any sort of database of email lists you might have from past purchasers, from past holiday season, that you can go ahead and upload into something like an AdRoll dashboard um, to then make sure you're retargeting them or staying in front of them as they browse this Christmas across the web. Um, and on the note of extend, expanding, expanding cookie durations, absolutely, this is when you want to be targeting users for a longer period of time. So just anyone who has shown interest in your site for maybe the last, you know, 90 to 180 days even, you want to make sure you're bringing them back. You know they like your brand, you want to bring them back so that they potentially buy their Christmas needs with you. Um, this is another great time too, to run something like a loyalty campaign. So kind of to Nick's point earlier, just anyone you know who has made purchases with your brand in the past, are they're likely to come back and purchase again. They probably had a great experience. So this is one you'd want to engage with, retarget, whatever it might be, people who have made purchases with you um, previously in something like a loyalty campaign. So um, great, thanks Nick. And I guess now we're gonna dive into essentially the you know overall 10 tips for creating great Christmas ads. Um, so number one, we have said this already, but we can't emphasize it enough, given it's July and we're talking about it, but preparation is key. So really, tip number one, um, I think it's actually, you can go ahead, next slide, sorry. Yeah, number one, yeah, it's okay. So tip number one, start planning for Christmas early. Um, so as we know, the last few weeks of November are actually one of the busy busiest spending periods for Christmas overall with things like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, in fact, there's an estimated sales for this year of over 4.3 billion pounds um, just in those last few weeks of November alone, so up 62% from 2015. So that's just reinforcing the importance of making sure you capitalize on this time and get all of your campaigns, your creatives locked in and ready to go by the start of November at the very latest. Um, step two, um, Nick did mention this, but really important to avoid creative fatigue. So essentially, ad fatigue happens when a customer has been exposed to the same message just one too many times, so they really don't see the ad anymore. They're just kind of numb to it. Um, to keep your ads looking distinct and fresh, you, I really recommend updating your creative once or twice a month, potentially even more frequent on social channels. People are on Facebook and on Instagram a lot, and they're going to see a lot of ads, so they will fatigue even faster. Um, don't worry, like it doesn't need to be a really big ordeal to do these refreshes. You can make really low effort changes. You can tweak old concepts with new colors, new call to action buttons, borders or images, and that simple update will make the ad seem new to, to a customer. Um, it's also really important on your ad to include a call to action. So just let the audience know exactly what to expect when they click your ad. What does your brand have to offer? Um, in fact, we did a pretty recent analysis of AdRoll clients using Facebook specifically, and we found that click-through rates increased just about three times when we added a call to action button. Um, a lot of social platforms make this simple. Facebook has pre-created call to action buttons. So just sticking something like try it now or buy it now or get it today on your ad can really help increase your overall click-through rates. Um, yeah. Uh, tip three is to make sure, kind of on that note of Facebook, that you're using social media. Um, Facebook and Instagram really are no longer just brand awareness channels. These platforms, in fact, now drive real, measurable sales for companies. Um, as Nick mentioned, one of the key drivers to their successful Christmas campaign last year was their Facebook campaigns, as it had a 10 times higher ROI. Um, so just make sure you're using well-lit, high-quality holiday images in your, in your ads to really help grab the customer's attention and then just steal the deal by driving them through to one of your Facebook or Instagram, um, you know, or by driving them through to your site via Facebook or Instagram and use one of those call-to-action buttons that are easy to implement. 
Um, the fourth tip is to use segments to personalize your ads. Um, we've really found throughout some of the you know, research we've done um, on our customer data at AdRoll that consumers are looking for personalization. Um, if you're retargeting this Christmas, it's important to personalize your ads by segmenting your audience into different groups based on products or pages they viewed on site. So essentially, if someone has spent a lot of time viewing um, t-shirts on your site, then you want to make sure maybe you're showing them ads for t-shirts or for something like Moonpig, if they've been on the flower page, you want to make sure you're showing them ads for flowers. And that's kind of that idea behind segmenting and personalizing the ads. Um, you can even try to segment for like discounts or special offers. So maybe it's um, people who have made a purchase in the past, you want to give this segment of users a special coupon to come back and purchase again. Um, this essentially will just help to convert more shoppers and drive more sales for you. Number five uh, is just to make sure you get ready for Cyber Monday and Retargeting Tuesday. So as mentioned, you know, the end of November is a peak spending period for so many holiday and Christmas shoppers. So um, UK consumers have said that sales and price discounts do help them decide where to shop. And in, as we all know, discounts are the most frequent for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So not only is it important to make sure you're advertising during these peak times, but to stay in front of these users after Black Friday and Cyber Monday to keep them coming back to your site, continuing their Christmas shopping throughout the rest of the season, um, and into like Retargeting Tuesday, which falls just after Cyber Monday. So don't let your ads go dark after Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Make sure you continue to advertise because you still have a few weeks left till Christmas. People are still shopping. Um, our next tip, um, and again, Nick touched on this, but use dynamic creative to create ads that are personalized, beautiful, and on brand. So dynamic creative is a technology that really helps serve unique ads to customers based on the actions they took on your site. So if your company offers a variety of products or pricing models, you can use dynamic creative to target those segments with ads relevant to them. So kind of what we talked about before with personalizing ads to segments, Dynamic ads can do this for you automatically. Um, so for Moonpig, it's really helpful when we run dynamic creatives, users who have viewed the gifts section will automatically see ads with gifts in it, or people who have viewed the you know, Christmas cards will see ads with the cards, um, and this will automatically happen um, through the algorithm um, and with the dynamic ads that we have created customized for Moonpig. Essentially, this helps keep everything relevant, it helps reduce ad fatigue, and it keeps your brand top of mind for customers who maybe weren't ready to convert on their first visit to your site. Um, number seven, this may seem um, self-explanatory, but it is really important and it is actually more helpful than you realize, but just make sure you use Christmas-specific imagery and creative. So just spruce up your ads, um, maybe even your landing page you're directing people to when they click on your ad. Maybe you want a fun Christmas-specific landing page. Even your site navigation can be more Christmas-branded. Maybe you want to turn the mouse into a Christmas tree when someone lands on your site. Something fun, make it interactive, um, but it's just really important and it helps kind of let people know that you as a retailer are also in that festive spirit and you're in, into the gift giving and it just helps them kind of encourage them throughout their holiday shopping. In fact, um, some of my favorite ads from AdRoll are ones, the dynamic ones we've had, you know, snowflakes falling in the background, and any other festive imagery like that can just be really beneficial to increasing your overall ad performance. Um, number eight, just making sure that you use discounts to create urgency with shoppers. So just really stress the importance of short-term or once-a-year sale, 24-hour flash sale, whatever it might be, but anything with some sort of urgency associated is going to entice and help people actually complete that final purchase. Make sure if you do do this, you're just very clear about what is the discount deal, when do they expire, what are the terms, and exactly how do I go about getting this deal, what's the code involved. Just make it very explicit and easy to read in the ad. Um, in, in fact, it's even possible to try something like a free trial 
or even free shipping, as simple as it might sound. Maybe you offer free shipping year-round and it's on your site. That's okay. Re-emphasize that in the ad. It's still something. It's still a motivator to drive people back to actually complete a purchase. Um, in fact, we found that offering a bonus gift or like a two-for-one deal can be a great kind of incentive because maybe I'm shopping for a gift for my sister, but then I get one for me too. So it's just kind of a fun way to help people kind of push them to that final point of purchase. Um, number nine, I think this one is often overlooked, but very, very important. Make sure you plan for an increase in site traffic. Um, so just make sure you work with your dev team or whatever team oversees your website to ensure that the pages can handle the amount of traffic increase you're going to see during the Christmas season. You would not want come Black Friday, your site can't handle the traffic, and your checkout page crashes, and then you lose all the potential revenue. So just really, really plan for this one. And again, I think it's something that is accidentally overlooked often by retailers. Um, and our final tip, um, email is hot this Christmas, and it's just becoming kind of a hotter trend in general. So we just have found that you know it's really important to use a clever subject line to help increase your open rates. Unfortunately, these days, you know, calling out a discount in an email subject line isn't always enough anymore to really pique your customer's interest. So try testing shorter subject lines, focus on a common pain point that your products can help solve, just something to help break through the noise. Uh, worst case, you know, try an emoji. Uh, who doesn't love a good emoji? And shockingly enough, we've actually tested them um, at AdRoll and we've seen a 45% increase in open rates. They save space so it's a short subject line, they quickly convey emotion, and they definitely add personality. Um, and I know for me, I've gotten them a few times and they stand out in my inbox, hands down. I'm always like, who sent me an emoji? And I always think it's a friend, so I'll click on it. So those are actually really helpful to um, overall increase your open rates for your emails you send out. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a wrap of our, ten to our top 10 tips for Christmas ad planning. If you do want more tips, you can check out the AdRoll blog. It's just blog.adroll.com, um, and it will help get your Christmas planning completed this summer. Yes, this early. So, Back to you, Justin. Well, thank you very much, Sarah and Nick. A fantastic intro to what you can do today in the height of summer to get ready for Christmas planning. I had lots of questions coming in, so let me just pick a few to put them to you both. Uh, first one comes from Charlotte, and it says... Uh, Sarah, you mentioned cookie duration earlier on. Can you talk a bit more about that and, and how does this impact Christmas campaign planning? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great question. So cookie durations are essentially um, kind of how long the recency a user has been to site and like how long then do we, uh, do we like take them into account to be retargeted for. So a general campaign that's not in the Christmas season in a retail space I might only target a user for, you know, seven or 14 days since they've been to site and did not make a purchase. And after that, I assume they're no longer interested, they bought it somewhere else, or they just don't want that, you know, t-shirt anymore. Um, however, at the Christmas season, we want to expand these cookie durations so that we're capitalizing on reaching a broader audience and anyone who's engaged with your site in the last three months, six months, or maybe even the entire last year. Because again, this is the time where people who don't always shop online are increasing the online shopping behaviors, purchasing more. And so I guess that's the whole idea behind increasing cookie durations, is to um, bring people back who have engaged with your site at the Christmas season. Um, Fantastic, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a, there's a question here from Tim. Uh, Nick, it's for you. Moonpig, obviously, as that saying that Christmas is one of your busiest times. So Nick wants to know, how do moon pigs stay ahead of the curve this Christmas? And what advice have you got in a really crowded marketplace? I'm guessing Nick works for Nick with crowded. So. <laughs> we do. Uh, I think something we do really well at Moonpig is integrated campaign planning. Uh, the role of digital isn't anymore um, an afterthought to traditional uh, media types. Uh, it's an essential vehicle in the customer journey, and especially for us, it generates a lot of revenue. Um, so when you're planning, get your voice heard early on to make sure that you have consistent creative, consistent offers on your retargeting, on your prospecting, all the way up to your TV campaigns. It will make cut through a lot easier, and it will resonate that much more with your customers. Fantastic. Uh, question that I wanted to ask, actually, but it's also come in here from uh, Jane. 
And it says, sorry, you do talk, Sarah. So I keep doing that wrong, don't I? That's okay. I respond to both. It's okay. (laughs) It's spelling. She spelled sorry. Uh, So uh, back to you, the start of your talk, you talked about prepare early for Christmas. Now, look, not everyone's going to be so uh, ahead of the game as some of your clients. Mm -hmm. So uh, what she asks is, we haven't got our marketing off the ground yet for Christmas. So what are the first things we can do from retargeting and advertising perspective to get back on track? Yeah, no, and don't worry, like you're still not behind the curve. You still have time to plan, but just like Nick said earlier, start now. I think a few key things. One is organization. So just take the time to get yourself organized. Um, Work on figuring out whether you dive into last year's data or if you haven't run a Christmas campaign in the past, maybe look at the overall data from the year, but figure out what are your goals, what are your KPIs, what are you trying to achieve. Um, from there, then I would look into what types of you know vendors are best to work with to hit these goals. Should it be retargeting? Um, Nick mentioned this, but get the creatives kind of in the process of being made from the you know design team you work with, or whether it's you know the vendor you work with, they create your ads for you. You know, such as like AdRoll might do with dynamic ads. Get those in the works, and then um, outline an overall strategy. Uh, work with your account manager. Figure out what the best Christmas strategy is. And I think those are probably some of the first initial steps. But dive into your data, figure out what you're trying to achieve. Um, From there, figure out who are the best vendors to achieve those goals. And then kind of get the creative, I would say, rolling as well. Fantastic. Nick, any thoughts from you? Obviously, I guess you're well prepared for Christmas. (laughs) But for people that aren't quite prepared yet, what would you advise be to get ready? Yeah, just echoing Sarah. So um, also know your site and what data um, you need to harvest and what's already available. Um, You know, get sort of tags and pixels in places early on so that you have um, a strong data set for, from which to retarget. Um, so, so, yeah. Fantastic. Now, I've got a question come in from Mahari, and we often get these sort of questions um, when we do webinars. Is uh, She says she works in the public sector. A lot of what we've been talking about, as always, is, is sometimes a bit too B2C focused, maybe for some listeners. So she says uh, they do a lot of Christmas campaigns around social marketing, such as recycling at Christmas, road safety, bogus crime. She wants to know, have either of you got any specific tips for this type of sector on, on the sort of marketing we're talking about? I think that, I mean, a lot of the, especially when, you come, when it comes to the ad creative planning, a lot of this can, you know, the same... I think advice can be applied to this sector. Just make sure you, you know, maybe have a fun play on your recycling ads and make it something that it's holiday focused with a fun holiday image. And it's like, do good this holiday, this Christmas season, whatever it might be, recycle, don't forget. I just think that a lot of these, like I said, could still be incorporated into that that sector specifically. Um, And again, it's, I think it's something where you want to reach as many users as possible. It's essentially to do good and make a difference. So, and Christmas is the time to do that. So I think, again, that's when you want to expand your overall reach, get more people kind of in your audience pool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then sort of on the converse side, I'd say also um, make sure that you segment. You, I can imagine that you, this is um, a big a big uh, target audience for you. And depending on how much budget you got, you've got, you need to make sure that you use every dollar or every pound that you can. Um, make sure that you set up really strong segments to make sure that every pound that you use is actually hitting a relevant person. Um, and that makes sure that your, your campaign gets a good cut through. Fantastic. Okay, we've got another question here I think is uh, it's quite interesting. It's from Richard. He's talking about the fact that uh, you mentioned, Sarah, we, the question is what about segmentation on mobile? So you mentioned earlier, important, get your segmentation right. Is there any difference when you're looking at the mobile platform to, to uh, PC when you're looking at segmentation? I know... For, for us at AdRoll, definitely. I mean, well, the way we segment at AdRoll um, for our online and our mobile campaigns is actually very similar, sorry. So from a difference perspective, within our dashboard, essentially, and I can only speak kind of from an AdRoll perspective, so Nick might have more light on just overall kind of the mobile segmentation. But for us, um, we're able to create kind of segments similarly to we than that we do for web. So um, you just can basically find a user who made it to a certain point on your site that you then want to retarget on Facebook or on Instagram um, to make sure you're in front of them with that mobile presence. And you can go ahead and um, you can do that no problem, the exact same as online. But it's equally as important to be segmented on the mobile side as it is on the online side in my perspective. Yeah, definitely. And I think what's really important is to um, know how you're going to look at the data when you um, think about cross device planning. Um, so, I mean, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, brands 
target people across device, but actually don't reflect that in how um, in how it's looked at. Um, so if you're tracking cross device, then that's really important to make sure that you have the KPIs there that are really strong. Um, and yeah, just mirroring what Sarah said, make sure that uh, but that make sure make sure that what the creative that you use are on a on mobile is uh, is relevant to that to that to those ad sizes rather than just sort of rehashing it and rendering it um, rendering your desktop um, desktop sizes to mobile. Make sure that you're talking in for uh, talking the right way in the right environment. Fantastic, lots of nice tips there. Now another interesting question here from Gemma. She says her demographic is 55 plus. So she wants to know from both of you, have you completed any successful online ad campaigns with this audience? And her worry, and we face this a lot at the drum, uh, she's worried that retargeting ads, etc., might put off her audience. But what are your thoughts on those those two sort of interlinked issues? Um, I think I think that was a problem that was, that was quite rife a couple of years ago. Although I think there's been so much research about um, all the demographics um, uh, being sort of uh, really well. They have a, they have a lot of they usually they can be quite an affluent uh, market, um, and I think you just have to be you just have to know um, what, what what sites to appear on and what um, to make sure that you're appearing in a contextually relevant environment. Um, yeah, and I think um, just to chime in from my perspective, I actually think it can still be like highly effective. I just just make sure maybe the ad copy you use is something that wouldn't scare them. Like, hey, we know you were on site, come back. Because I think sometimes I do see some of the older demographics still doesn't fully understand the way retargeting works. And they think that maybe we're using their data in a negative way. So I think just be careful as how you speak to your audience in the actual ads themselves. And also things we can control easily, like frequency capping, make sure we don't inundate them, we don't show them too many ads. But I still think it's highly effective because I think this audience is actually found maybe even more on Facebook than a younger demographic. So I think this is where social can actually be very beneficial. And I think retargeting can still be really um, a really powerful tool for you, even with an older audience. But just be careful, again, as to how you maybe approach it. The older audience are kicking off the young people on Facebook often nowadays, so it's probably <laughs> exactly the right environment. Okay, I've got a good question here from Vanessa. Uh, she asks, while using AdRoll, do ads still get served who, to people who have made it through the checkout process? We're a company with a small budget and would love to make it as efficient as possible. And a uh, follow-on question, or would you say it's beneficial to still, still serve ads to them in case of the chance of a repeat purchase? Yes, that's a really good question. So um, AdRoll actually, like our overall kind of strategy and approach is to exclude users who have made a purchase um, for the last you know, 30 or so days. This is always going to be dependent upon your overall kind of marketing flow and what you see your audience trends are. So if they're repeat purchases more frequently than that, you would want to retarget them, retarget them within a quicker period than 30 days. But absolutely, um, initially, we always will exclude anyone who's made a purchase. Because, um, yeah, you want to make the most efficient use out of your ad dollars. Um, and then the follow-up question was, oh, would it be beneficial to still serve them and chance for repeat purchase? So at Christmas specifically, these are the few times where I'd say either just don't exclude people who have purchased or exclude them for a very short window. Um, but what we generally will do, as opposed to just um, not excluding them at all, is run, again, what I mentioned briefly what we call a loyalty campaign. So people who we know have engaged with your brand um, actually intentionally retarget them, people who have purchased, intentionally retarget them to bring them back to make another purchase. So yes, we do find loyalty campaigns highly effective, but it's just kind of a different segment than your general retargeting campaign might be. I hope that helps. Excellent. Uh, next question is nice and simple. Uh, Sophie asks, any tips for a Christmas gift voucher campaign? So make sure it's competitive. Um, you know, the space is going to be so uh, competitive this year as it is every Christmas. Um, and if you want to be noticed, then try and be as competitive as possible. And if you can't, uh, try and spin it somehow so that it does uh, look like it's, you know, in the customer's benefit. Um, or try and maybe uh, turn out ahead a bit and trying to be a bit more creative with it. Uh, I think, yeah, just try and be as creative as possible with, with, with the and, really. and I think on that, maybe that sense of urgency. So even if you are going to offer it like a couple of times throughout the season, but maybe put a sense of urgency like this week only, here's a specific you know coupon or voucher, and maybe you're going to run it again the next week, but they don't need to know that. I think any sense of urgency to really help them 
you know, actually make the purchase is important. Fantastic. Question here uh, from Andy. He asks, you mentioned earlier in the talk, Sarah, about not uh, focusing just on the Christmas period itself. He asks, how do I know how long to run a campaign for? So how long should it run after Christmas? How long should it launch before Christmas? That's for both of you, really. Um, yes, I mean, you think it, de it depends. I think it depends on what you're selling. Um, so I know for Moonpig, uh, you know, we, we know how many uh, of our customers buy, but we know the recency of, how, of what they're buying. So, you know, if if, if, if you've got, uh, if you work for an FM, FMCG, um, you know that those people are going to come back sooner rather than later. Um, So again, any any last about the length of the campaign? How early should you last and launch it, and how how late should you run? Should you run past yeah. New Year's Eve? You know, how, how do you yeah, decide yeah, how absolutely. long this campaign should run for? Um, no, absolutely. I think um, definitely it's important to make sure you're running kind of year round. So run a, what I call kind of like an evergreen campaign. So just you don't. We kind of call it like you know making sure you're staying in front of your audience, keeping the lights on, if you will. Um, in general, sometimes you see overall sales can drop after the Christmas period you don't want that to impact your overall revenue and sales you want to make sure you're still selling people who get gift cards for Christmas you know they're out making purchases so I would absolutely continue your advertising after the holidays your budget might you know be really high for Christmas itself and drop a little uh, come into January but absolutely don't go dark um, and same with you know pre Christmas you want to make sure people are still remembering your brand people I know people who do their Christmas shopping now which is crazy because I can't even get it done like the week before Christmas but um, so you just want to make sure you do have campaigns running pre you know spike Christmas period which is kind of November um, and it definitely I think hands down the best advice we keep that live um, into January fantastic quick question this is from me actually uh, Nick I, I see Moonpig ads all the time on the tube etc how, how important uh, is integrated on and offline in, in the campaigns you're running over Christmas yeah definitely um, as I mentioned before I think it's become increasingly uh, important to make sure that you've got a joined up campaign um, you know campaigns just don't work when you have different creative uh, stylistically uh, different styles on, on your creative you need to make sure that you can uh, you can you can get the cut through. Um, so yeah, I think it's yeah, it's pretty important. Any last thoughts for you, that Sarah? I guess it's just important to make sure across every platform, really. Yeah. We've we've run to the end of this webinar. We've gone slightly over. Uh, just to answer, lots of people are asking, will the slides be available after? Yes, uh, everyone that was registered, everyone listening in the moment, will be sent a recording of the webinar and the slides as well. Uh, probably this afternoon or will I spare morning so again I think we're going to wrap up now thank you so much for listening I'd like to thank again thank you so much our two amazing guest speakers Sarah and Nick thanks for listening and good afternoon thanks thank you